and uh, he's uh, again a renowned surgeon from Amritsar in India and uh, again a pioneer for many techniques and he is going to be speaking on nucleus management and challenges in subluxated cataract. Uh, thank you uh, Dr. Gaurav and uh, Dr. Ashwin for the opportunity. So am I audible and is my screen clear? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, perfect. So I would be uh, talking about nucleus management challenges in subluxated cataracts. So basically, I'm going to show a movie wherein I'm going to show in this patient, you will find that there is subluxation or zonular absence at more than 180 degrees. So the strategy in these patients is to create an incision in the area where the zonules presence is there. The next step is I should have you know, use triumphs and lawn in this patient to rule out the presence of vitreous. But since I was sure I did not do it, the choice of viscoelastic is also very important. You can use a viscodispersive followed by a viscocohesive. The capsulorexis in this situation is very important because we have to base it centering the lens. I could continue with the rexis till now, but then I thought at this point I needed a support in the form of artificial zonules, in the form of capsular hooks. So capsular hooks have to be used. No iris hooks have to be used. And once I was with, through with the capsular axis, then I did mild hydrodissection. And once that hydrodissection was done, then the plan was to do nuclear emulsification. But before that, I thought that I would be using a CTR. So this CTR, which I'm using, this is not the ideal way how it should have been used because whenever the zonular dehiscence is more than say 90 degrees, in that case, you have to start from the area of zonular where the zonules are intact and then go on to the area of where the zonules are not intact. So I tried to do it, but I should have used done it in the clockwise manner, but since this capsular hook was on the way, so I started doing it the other way around within the, in the anti-clockwise way, but I, I targeted the area where the zonules were intact. So I continued and I was able to implant the CTR uh, in, in such a way that I hit the, where the zonules were intact. The timing of CTR is also very important because here I thought that initially I had thought that the, uh, you know, the nucleus, nuclear pieces, nuclear, nucleus fragment, the nucleus as a whole was not very hard. Had it been very hard, I could have delayed the insertion of CTR at that point of time, because CTR implantation at this stage is more traumatic than implanting it at a later stage. But if the nuclear fragment had been softer, that, that should have been the first option. So I started with the emulsification. In this patient, I'm using 40 IOP uh, pressure, which this is a very a relatively old movie. In the present circumstances, I use around 28 millimeters IOP uh, for my phaco emulsification because that helps a lot. So I've done cross chopping in this and here I'm, I have made created small nuclear fragments, separated them fully. And now because of the artificial zonules in the form of capsular hooks, there was immobilization and I was able to rotate the nucleus. Another important thing which could have been done here was that I could have rotated these nuclear fragments, which were hard in these patients, in this patient and moved it in the area where the zonular presence was less in that situation, that could have helped me because that would have provided a three-dimensional additional support to the capsular bag. So now once the last, uh, the nuclear fragment is being chopped, the, the click is divide them into smaller pieces and then, you know, emul then emulsify them. I'm repositioning it and continuing with all this. So in other words, what is happening is that now when the last nuclear fragment has to be taken out, what is being done is I've inflated the bag and I'm protecting the posterior capsule at this point of time also by placing the spatula behind the phaco tip so that 
by any means the nuclear the posterior capsule doesn't come in the way this last pearl is how to do you know the irrigation aspiration in these patients the tangential stripping is the answer in these patients you have to do this in start in that area where the zonules are intact and you can continue it and you can see how i am doing tangential stripping the vacuum is not on the higher side so this is another click which has to be borne and at times when you are not able to then you can do reverse stripping also by taking by holding the posterior lamella and bringing it out this is the last you know cortical piece which is being taken out now the ctr implantation technique is based on the concept you can use it as late as you can but and as early as you must because later implantation is less traumatic and but if you find that it is being delayed overly then you should implant before it gets too late so timing of ctr implantation is very important you can do it following ccc during nuclear emulsification and following cortical removal factors which influence the timing of ctr implantation include the lens density if the lens density is more is on the harder side harder side then you can use nuclear piece as a scaffold which i'll show and if it is a uh, soft then when you are trying to with the aspiration in the region between the two capsular hooks at times it so happens you emulse, you aspirate the caps the the capsular fornix and you can have a pcr use of capsular hooks is also very important because that helps in delaying the insertion of uh, uh, ctr so it uh, the advantages are it protects against vitreous herniation and it avoids back collapse during the end of phaco and cortical removal so it's more traumatic if you use ctr initially then i here i would like to show you a nuclear scaffold you will find here what has happened is that there is an area of zonular weakness so i am i have decided at this stage that here you know what should i do so either i should be using a capsular hook for that matter ctr or a nuclear scaffold so what is this nuclear scaffold now when i re rewind it i find when the nuclear fragment were there in the area of zonular adhesions what was happening was it was providing a three dimensional support so nuclear scaffold is something which you can use during uh, patients with zonular adhesions provided it the nuclear fragment happens to be hard so the learning points are that they use capsular hooks for capsular access the site the timing of ctr implantation is case based and nucleus scaffold can be used in heart cataracts thank you very much for your kind attention